Welcome back to the channel, my name is Abel. we are back with Football Manager 2019 and Eastern Resurgence with Bitlin FC Dynamo and today we are away from home and we take on a relegated from the Bundesliga team uh, is VFL Bochum or Bochum? I'm going to go with Bochum for now but if I'm wrong do correct me. We are still unbeaten, 10 games in and we've yet to suffer defeat this season. We have dropped some points and drawn 2 or 3 matches but um, 10 games in into late October and we've yet to suffer defeat. Last episode we came out 2-1 winners against uh, Augsburg, went behind early on, got a quick equaliser and then Selkos in the second half giving us the lead and giving us the win. A game where we didn't, we faced a lot of shots and a couple of chances but I managed to grind out a 2-1 win. Quite a few games to get through off screen, I played 6 so uh, we'll jump through those and then we'll go into the match. No more transfers to tell you about the window slam shot. So uh, we'll go through the matches and we started off with uh, dropping our first points of the season against Ingolstadt, a difficult team, um, a team that again were relegated from the top flight, much like our opponents today, Bochum. And um, yeah, they took some points from us, but then uh, it's more like we took it from them. We were not favourites for this one and it took a late Paradisi goal for us to get the point. We didn't play too badly in this one. We were okay, but we weren't great. We was It was just a very average performance, if you like. Uh, we went behind on the half an hour. Tuba Jakubiak scoring both goals for Ingolstadt, and he got the first goal on the half hour mark. We equalised before the hour. Furkan Tizurik's been in um, fine form recently, and I think has like a good five or six goals, maybe even more than that. And he equalised on 57 minutes to give us a 1-1 uh, scoreline, uh, but then we went behind again. 71 minutes to Kubiak scoring a second goal of the game uh, to make it 2 1 to Ingolstadt, and we left it very, very late. Paradisi off the bench might be his first goal for the club, I'm not quite sure, but he scored the 94th minute goal. I think it was a free kick, if I remember correctly, and um, saved, us, um, saved us a point. So almost a first defeat of the season, but a late goal from Paradisi spared our blushes. We also drew our next match as we hosted 1860 Munich and again we left it very late to get the equaliser. Some some iffy performances but we managed to keep our unbeaten run going. Again our opponents took a lead and it was at Georgios Spanudakis on the 13th minute getting the 1860 Munich goal. A lot of Greek players in in this division. I, I know you get some sort of Turkish players and Greek players with like joint nationality but there seems to be a fair lot down here. Well, we've got Selkos so you know we've got a Greek player as well. And um, there, Spanudakis gave them the lead, and uh, it took a late goal again for us to uh, save a point. Mark Brasnitz in the 92nd minute, giving us the goal, and uh, again, saving us a point and sparing us some blushes. And again, almost a first defeat, but a late goal saved it. I don't think either team is very good in this one. I, we defended pretty well, but despite the goal. Other than that, we kept them pretty quiet, but then they did the same to us until the very late goal. So, I don't know, I think the draw's fair. Neither of the team really put in a great performance here. Then we thrashed Regensburg 5-1 away from home. A stunning performance here and uh, a hat-trick for Mark Brasnitz. The Brasnitz show is up and running once again for another season, it seems. It's going to be another double-figure tally and maybe he'll get another 15. That's He's never scored less than 15 goals in the season. And he's on his way again here. He's a stunning player, is Brasnitz. One of the most consistent goal scorers I've had in one of these long-term saves. He wasn't the only goal scorer on the day though. It was actually Fulkan Tajurek getting a first goal on 32 minutes to make it 1-0. Brasnitz added his first goal on 41 minutes to make it 2-0. And almost immediately uh, it was 3-0. And it was Tim Albertat with his first goal for the club, the midfielder, making it 3-0. We continued the dominance in the second half. It took less than three minutes of the second half for Brasnitz to get his second goal and our fourth. Riedersberg did eventually reply. 82 minutes, they got uh, what was a consolation goal. Felix Klaus scoring on 82 minutes off the bench, uh, replacing Oktai. They had a really poor game. Defending was not good. Ibas, the winger, just did nothing. And uh, they did get a consolation goal, but um, we restored our full goal margin, getting goal number five of the match. Brezhnev's winning a penalty late on and converting the penalty to complete his hat-trick and make it 5-1 to us. Very, very good performance. And then we managed to win by four again. This was against Duisburg, but this time we kept a clean sheet. And won 4-0 against a team that I think might have been second. So close rivals, and we absolutely trounced them. Mats Kolek with a, a debut to remember. His first match for the club, he struggled for match fitness early on and had a bit of an injury to get through before he could play for us. But um, he was up to sort of decent fitness, played his first match for us here today and got two goals. So a fantastic performance by the debutant, getting two of our four goals. 
Uh, the first came on 14 minutes to give us a 1-0 lead. Uh, and then the 2-0 lead came uh, via an own goal as Andre Hoffman, the defender, put in his own net to make it 2-0 after 20 minutes. Five minutes into the second half, Brasnitz scored his fourth in two to make it 3-0 to us. And then in injury time, Kolok got his second goal and um, made it 4-0 on the night. Another great, great performance after a couple of iffy ones where we dropped points. Two great wins, two big wins. And uh, yeah, kept us top and kept our unbeaten run going. Then we had a strangely difficult game against uh, bottom club Karlsruhe. They gave us a bit of grief in this one, did uh, Karlsruhe. Not expecting to, but they put away a lot of shots. They had some chances, got two goals. It was a strange match and one that I didn't really expect to to win by just one. If anything, this was the one we were going to win 4 0. Uh, we took a 2-0 lead, Brasnitz with a, a first half brace, that is 6 goals in 3 matches now, so he's back to his old ways of scoring. He scored in the half hour, scored on 38 minutes to make it 2-0. Uh, Karlsruhe uh, replied in 63 minutes with uh, Luca Volschmidt scoring to make it 2-1. Max Fuchs made an appearance off the bench to end a pretty long goal drought I believe. 91st minute he made it 3-1. His first goal in a while. He was complaining about lack of football. If they decided to give him a game off the bench and he managed to get a goal. Uh, but then Karlsruhe got a second goal. A Choi Kyun Ruk scored on the 95th minute right at the death uh, to make it 3-0. But it was all too late. And we got a 3-2 win. It was a close game. Like, closer than it should have been really. And um, yeah. It was a win though, that's all I'll take for now. And then in our most recent game, we dropped points as we hosted at Holstein Kiel, and it was a 2-2 draw. Again, Brasnitz found himself on the score sheet as Holstein Kiel gave away an early penalty. Brasnitz converted it after just seven minutes to give us a nice early lead. Pretty quiet half other than that. In the second half, Holstein Kiel did equalise as Anil Sabanadvich, again, that's probably wrong, uh, got the equaliser on 49 minutes, just a few minutes into the second half. And then late on, uh, we went behind three minutes from time. Lucas Hurler scored on 87 minutes to make it 2-1 to Holstein Kiel. And again, we were looking like being on the end of our first defeat of the season. Didn't happen though, as in the last minute, pretty much, Julius Franca scored to make it 2-2. And again, a late goal saved us a point and it stopped us from losing our first match. Three times in six games, that's happened that we've scored late on to like prevent us from losing that unbeaten start it's really good work but i just wish it was a lot easier so we have had a great start i mean we've drawn three matches but we've won the other seven so a fantastic start unbeaten we take on bochum today after that we've got the german cup second round game against Bayern, which i won't be playing live because it's only the second round if this were later on in the tournament i'd play it but for now we're not expected to get far in this we're gonna get a good half a million from it but i'm not expecting to win it if we win it Hooray. Brasnitz with nine goals already, so he's well on his way to double figures. We're only 10 games in. Could be his highest tally yet if he continues the way he is, the way he has been, with 24 being his highest so far. That's easily beatable. Paradis has had a breakthrough season, six assists, and started um, almost every match. We'll jump straight into uh, today's match then. VFL Bochum, who are favourites for the match, but we're in good form. They're doing okay. They're in 10th, mid-table. Let's see how this goes. Max Fuchs a bit of an injury concern for this one. So we'll go back to Tazurek starting up front. We'll put Kabea on the bench. Kabea not very happy that um, he's not being started. He wants us to end his loan and send him back to Fortuna Dusseldorf. We're not going to do that. We are actually going to start him today though over Tazurek just to just to try and keep him happy. Hazic with the, uh, it's the same as well. Hazic isn't happy he's not being played, but he's not been in very good form. Markovsky has been a lot better at left back. So that's why he's getting the nod ahead of uh, Hazic. And Osterman's playing alongside Halili as well. Uh, we'd rather Kuli on the bench, but Halili started very, very well, got a couple of goals. So that's why he's starting. And for a player that has just two star current ability, he's surprising everyone, including me. I'm going to go with Tim Albitat in place of Prestoffer, though. That's the only other change I'm going to make. But elsewhere, we're doing well. Kola got a couple of goals in that debut match, but since then, not done much. Paradis has been very solid at right wing. So, uh, yeah, the team's playing very, very well. But against Bochum, it's going to be a tough game, this one. And probably the, the biggest challenge we'll have this season, I think. In terms on paper, this is going to be one of our toughest matches because they're relegated from the top flight. They are one of the front runners to get promoted. I think they're definitely in the top five, media wise. So one of our toughest tests of the season here. If we can avoid defeat here, then could say a lot about our whole season and could maybe be a big step towards a promotion this year. We get promoted every other season, so 
by that logic, we get promoted this year to the top flight. But let's see what happens in this game. One of our biggest ones. Ingo Markovsky plays up to Kola, the left winger. Kola with the ball to Brasnic, who could get number 10 and does. 10 goals for the season after 11 games. And he hasn't even started them all. Fantastic start again for Brasnic. And he's in double figures for the sixth season in a row. The most consistent goal scorer I think I've had in one of these long-term like saves. Like, in terms of series that have lasted like five plus seasons, I think Brasnic is definitely up there. I mean, I'm thinking some of the guys we have from Maidstone... Guys like Loza, I think they did very well, but I don't think they were as consistent as Brasnitz was. He's been stunning for me. 14th minute of the match, and we're in possession once again. Paradisi, backwards to Albitat. Goes long, Brasnitz through again here. He could set someone up for a goal, maybe. Um, no, he's been brought down. No, no foul for that, really. That's surprising, but we'll keep going. Suarez with a long ball. Halili with a header forward. Albitat does well to get to that. Julius Franca. Albitat has got Paradisi out wide. Plenty of options. And uh, does find Paradisi in the end. What can he do? That's Was that a shot or a cross? I'm not quite sure. But whatever it was, it wasn't good. It wasn't pretty. Kurt Chibb, be very careful here. I don't want to see any mistakes. Just keep it simple. I said no mistakes. And thankfully, Haltman's put it wide. That was a reprieve. Halili got very lucky then. Brasnitz with a free kick from a long way out. And well, I think it might have hit the woodwork. Colour to uh, Halili. Albertat. Again, finds Paradisi in space on the right-hand side. We're looking for the right overlap at the moment. That's why Kirch is finding his way up. Frank has a go. And just off target. Frank got a goal last game. He's um, staking his claim. We've got a lot of midfielders once again. It's going to be tough to keep them all happy. But a throw in here for Bochum. Could be a chance for them to score just before half-time here. And uh, Guillermo has got it. And Haltman, who's on a yellow. Anton. Tom is through, and again, it's wide. They're having chances broken, but they are not taking them. Markovsky, again on a yellow. We need to watch out. There's a couple of early bookings in this game. One for each, I think. Kabea is going to get to that, surely. Oh, yeah, but he's been dispossessed. But we are definitely the better team in this half. I mean, there have been shots from Bokum, but they really haven't created anything big. And this highlight is still going. We'll stay with it, because it might end in a goal for us. Paradisi. Is he going to go himself? No, he finds Brasnic and... Oh, it's got to be in! Oh, thank you, Kabea. That just stopped at the post and Kabea was there to poke it home pretty much just on the line. So if he'd have missed that, I think he would have been... He would have been set loan terminated then. If that had not gone in, you're going back to Dusseldorf. But thankfully, he scored it to make it 2-0. And we're looking, on course, for another win and extending our unbeaten run to 11. But half-time... Uh... I'm pleased how things are going. Keep it up. Very simple. I just like to try and limit them to how many opportunities they're having because they're having shots. They're not good shots. They're not big chances, but they're having shots nonetheless. So I'm just going to go for a demand more and see if we can extend this lead and go for three, maybe four now. Who knows? We're very level in possession. They've had more shots. Um, I'm going to make a change. Uh, 66 minutes. We'll see this highlight first of all. It is Bochum's way, it seems. Zahara, who I think has come off the bench, goes for goal and... At least he's on target. It's better than I did in the first half, but Hendel is equal to it. And a free kick here. I'm trying to make a change, but we keep seeing highlight after highlight. Kaminsky. Tommy, that's a, that's a great ball, actually. And it's over everybody, but um, Babox got it now. Can he put a cross in there? He can, but it's not great. And now Anton to Haltman. Again, space out wide. Babok. Haltman's got it again. I mean, there's not a ball going into the area here. There is now, and it's in, and it's Colner. It's 2-1. They seem to have made a lot of changes. I think they might have made a couple of subs um, at half-time. Or recently, anyway. But um, they have pulled a goal back. So now we need to be very careful. And it was um, kind of a half volley by Colner. But um, they have got a goal back. Zahara and Colner, the substitutes. Um, we are going to make a change because Frank has been a bit disappointing today. So we're going to change Albert to the ball winner. We're going to bring on uh, Prestoffer. 20 minutes left. We're walking a fine line here now. We were 2-0 up in this game. We've been pegged back. And the substitutes by Bokum seem to have changed this match. Because, um, you know, they've got a goal now. They're looking a bit better. And they're on target as well. Kola goes uh, for Brasnitz. Has a good ball, but Brasnitz with a header. I think he was hoping someone else would be further ahead, but he wasn't. Haltman to uh, Zahara. Guillermo. And Kola, the goal scorer. Goes for goal again. And again, it's just hit the woodwork. What do we do? Um, I'm going to bring on 
Hazic for Markovsky because that's where we've been a bit exposed. Uh, we'll make Hazic um, no nonsense, just very, do do the simple stuff really. And I'm gonna go for tighten up as well, just to get just try and keep hold of this lead now because I'm a bit concerned they're gonna get an equaliser. The they've been threatening all game, and I've I've got a feeling their second goal's coming. I don't want it to, but I've got a feeling that's happening. It's be a bit more disciplined. I'm gonna say. Right, tighten up. We've got one more change we can make as well. I think we might bring off one of our forwards and put a maybe a defender or another midfielder on. Going to take off Kabea. Albertat to that defensive midfield. We'll bring on Tim DeMelt. It's going to be a narrow win here. It's been a tough game. And both of them are tough opposition. But to get a win away from home against a team relegated from the division above, I think that's good going. Very good going. But, um, yeah, they, they, they've worried us a little bit. But we've managed to grind out a win. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, that's full time. We have got a 2-1 win away against VFL Bochum. Good performance. I mean, they were wasteful. 20 shots, only 9 on target. They had a few chances and didn't take them. So uh, I think we've done well to get a win there. Kind of took advantage of a pretty... Uh, not a terrible performance by them, but could have been a lot better. But um, I think we've done pretty well. Defending again, very, very strong. Paradisi, 7.5. Uh, Brasnitz gets man of the match. Um, yeah, I think we deserve that overall. I think they were a bit wasteful. So that is 11 played and still unbeaten as well. The only unbeaten side left. Well, at least the borderliners have what we want. That's brilliant news. We've just finished an upgrade to our youth facilities and we've immediately been allowed to upgrade it again. So that's fantastic news. So yeah, this is a real turning point in the club at the moment. It's like a very, it's, it's, it's a transition period at the moment because we're still paying the players about the same we're starting to spend a bit more money but but i think next season that's very much going to change we can start paying a lot more to our players and buying better players as well but yeah i think we're just in the middle of like a yeah like i said a transition at the moment but i'll stop waffling let's have a look at our upcoming fixtures so like i said Bayern are next in the german cup then we have newly promoted chemnitz Darmstadt, who uh, beat us on the last day last season, and then Kaiserslautern. Let's look at our upcoming fixture. So, like I said, Bayern are next in the uh, cup. Uh, then we have the uh, newly promoted Chemnitz, and then Darmstadt, who beat us on the last day last season. Uh, and then we host Kaiserslautern. So, next time, we're going to take on Nuremberg. Um, that's an away game, and then after that, uh, we'll have a double life come either between Paderborn and Dusseldorf or when we come back from the winter break with Union Berlin and Dynamo Dresden although there's going to be maybe some transfers in there if that's the case I might do one and then do the other one another time because two matches plus transfers too much um, we'll wait and see what happens in the transfer window I don't think it's going to be too much action we've got a lot of players as it is unless we sell or unless we end loans I don't think we're going to be signing anyone uh, but I'm going to end that there guys, thank you for watching, if you've enjoyed the video do drop a like down below, leave comments and if you want to see videos as and when they turn up on YouTube do hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to receive updates if I upload or go live and follow me on social media so you don't miss any of my content, I'll see you next time, we're going to be taking on Nuremberg, but 11 played, 0 lost, fantastic, sort of first or third of the season, we're doing really really well, we'll try and keep it going, but for now thank you for watching and I will see you soon, goodbye.